Raw adjustments can vary wildly. If you boost the black slider by 50, you might see this, or this, or this. Let's dive into what's happening and how to avoid trouble. I've opened this image as a camera raw smart object. If I double click into it, you can see here, I've got some adjustments already made. I'm gonna cancel this and just preserve this layer as a reference. And instead, let's make four copies of this. We'll go in and boost the blacks in four different ways. Now I wanna copy this as an independent smart copy and the Lumentia Basics panel can easily do that through the raw button. You'll notice that if you shift click, you get an independent copy. So I'm gonna do this four times to make four copies. If you're not working with Lumentia Basics, the way you can do it is right click and just simply choose new smart object via copy. But if you have the basics panel, it's quick and easy and the green light here lets you know that this is independent and changing this layer won't affect any others. Let's select these and just quickly copy them to mark them as being different from the original and then label them for what we're going to do. So on the bottom here, I wanna make a raw adjustment with a global black slider. Then in the next one, we use the camera raw filter to apply it globally as well. Then we'll go in with raw and do it locally through our mask and camera raw. And then finally, we'll do the same thing with a filter for local adjustments. So let's go and just starting with this bottom layer here, we're gonna boost the blacks and see what happens when we do it to the raw globally. So we'll double click into it, go to the black slider and boost it up by 50. Say okay. And you can see it does just what you'd expect. It brings out a lot of detail from the black areas. And I think that looks pretty good. For this next one, let's go and make an adjustment, but rather than working with the raw data, we use the camera raw filter. So we'll go to filter, camera raw filter, and notice something right off the bat here. The profiles are limited. We don't have things like Adobe standard because we don't have raw data. When you go and apply this on the outside of one of these smart objects, you actually do not have raw data. Even though it's called the camera raw filter, it's not raw data. And an obvious tell would be the temperature slider, which can now go to negative values. It's no longer in Kelvin. So that's gonna degrade the quality of the results because we don't actually have the raw data, even though it's on the inside of the smart object, it's not available to the filter under any circumstances. So let's now go and we'll make the same adjustment to blacks. And the only difference is the way we got here is as a filter versus directly in the raw. So we'll say, okay, we don't need this mass. Let's just get rid of that. And let's compare. Here's the version we applied on the outside of the image. So it's not raw versus the raw. And it's quite a bit different. There's a color shift and there's quite a difference in the amount of shadow detail. If we zoom in here, look at the raw adjustment. There's a lot of detail, more than I need here. I wouldn't push this as far for a real edit versus when I apply it as a filter, it's not extracting as much detail from it. So both are pretty good results. I don't think that this is a bad result, but it's different. And I definitely prefer the raw adjustment where possible. So let's now take a look at if we go and make the adjustment on raw again, but this time as a local adjustment. So when you double click, we're not gonna use the global slider. Instead, imagine we're using masks. So if we go into the masking area, let's create a new mask. And I don't wanna just do part of the image. I wanna compare the whole image. So I'm gonna choose a linear gradient and just do it off the side of the image. This is kind of a hack to affect the entire image. So we're not really using it like a local mask, but when we make the adjustment, these work differently than the global adjustments. So I'm gonna go into blacks and again, say 50 and look at that. It looks absolutely terrible. If you look at the histogram, there are no deep shadow values. It's just a completely different result. Even though it's called the same thing, it's still the black slider. It still has the raw data. The result is just completely different. Let's say, okay, and quickly compare these. I mean, the raw, with a global slider of 50 versus the raw with a local slider of 50, it's just not the same at all. The histogram's totally different. It looks washed out. Even comparing it to not having the raw data, I mean, look at the raw local is washed out versus applying it as a filter on the global. You're better off with a global slider, regardless of whether you have raw data or not, than to use that local slider. It's a really a, a very inferior result. And this is kind of the worst case for the raw adjustments. And that's why I started with a black slider. Not all these sliders are so dramatically different, but I think it's very important to understand this difference. And so let's now look at one last option, which is if we apply it as a filter and do it locally. So again, we'll go up to filter, camera raw filter, 
bypass the global, and instead go for a local adjustment. Again, do a linear gradient off the side so we can do the whole image. Set our blacks to 50. Seems like the same result. Let's get rid of our unused mask. And notice that whether it's the local filter, meaning not raw data, or the local on the raw data, it's pretty much the same result in this case. Not necessarily true for all the adjustments, but it is here. So the takeaway from this is the local blacks really are just something to be avoided if, if at all possible. And working with the raw data is always the most preferred if you can. What if you really want to stay within raw? I mean, what can we do to get a better result? Let's go just work with this local filter version. I mean, how could we target this in a way that preserves blacks? Well, we could go into our adjustments, go back here, it's the locally adjusted one. And we could try and use a range mask to target it so that it's not affecting the deepest areas. To do that, hold on the shift key when you hover here, you get the intersect option when you choose this. Now we go choose a luminance range. And then I'll bring up the blacks to protect blacks. And it doesn't matter how much I feather this, it's a pretty harsh result. These range masks can be pretty crude, and this really shows the difference here. So I don't think there's any version of this luminance adjustment here that's going to save the you know, underlying problem with a black adjustment. So I, I don't like this result. Let's cancel this. And instead, what if we did this with a luminosity mask on the outside? So you know, with the luminosity mask, you have a little bit more control in Photoshop. Let's hide this for a second. We'll use this as the basis of our mask. And using Lumenzia, I'm just going to grab a basic lights mask. We could customize it, but I'm just going to take it as is and apply it to that same layer by hitting mask. And I'm just going to apply it as a layer mask. And now when we show it, it's going to show that adjustment while protecting the blacks. And we see now is it's a much better adjustment that does a nice job of improving the shadow details without washing out. So you can see that the, the local adjustment itself was not that great. And the range mask is not as powerful as using a luminosity mask, which is why I really like to work with raw data and luminosity masks when I make my blends in Photoshop. You can just get to a much better result with the tools inside Photoshop. So you're definitely taking advantage of the raw tools but try to minimize those local adjustments to get the best results. So that's the scenario when working with the black slider. Let's take a look at some other examples. So in this next one, rather than building everything manually here, I've already gone ahead and done it, looking at what happens when we adjust the exposure by minus one or plus one. So I've got the same kind of grouping of adjustments here where this very first one is a raw adjustment boosting by one. So if we take a look at what I did, I just boosted exposure by minus one here. Sorry, set it in reverse. So it's a global minus one. And it does a nice job of bringing out lots of color and detail in that sky. Colors still look nice and natural. Overall, things look really good. If we make that same global adjustment, but as a filter, we get a different result. And I don't think that sky looks very nice. It's lacking color. It looks kind of fake. Some of the detail in the rocks are a little bit more flat. Clearly, doing the exposure adjustment on raw gave us a better result here. Now, if we go and look at the raw with a local adjustment here, turning that on, let's just compare the raw. Global raw versus local is quite similar. I could argue in favor for either one. I don't think there's a big difference in this scenario. So unlike the black slider, the exposure slider is much safer to use with a local adjustment. And then lastly, let's take a look if we do the filter with a local adjustment. And obviously that's very degraded, which is not a surprise because we already knew that working without the raw data was a problem. So let's compare those. So here is the local version without raw data compared to the global version without, you know, so no, no raw data either way. Obviously the global version I think looks nicer than the local version. So this is kind of the worst where we don't have raw data and we're not using the global adjustment. This one really lost the most quality. And again, I think just highlights the value of trying to work globally and with raw as much as possible. Let's go hide this and look in the opposite direction. What if we're trying to boost the shadow areas? So we looked at the blacks before, but what if we use the exposure slider instead? 
So doing a raw global adjustment here, we're going to go a plus one on exposure. And you see we get this adjustment here, brings out lots of nice detail, looks really good. If we do this as a filter so we don't have the raw data, well, you're not bringing out as much detail. So the same kind of thing we saw before, but still a reasonable result. You're just not going to extract as much shadow detail when you don't have the raw data. And if we do this locally with the raw, you get this result. Let's compare the raw, raw global versus local. Again, not too different, but I would definitely prefer the version that's using the global slider. And then lastly, looking at if we use the non-raw data as a local adjustment, let's just compare that. So this is gonna be the not raw local versus the global. And these are quite similar here. There's not a whole lot of difference in this particular scenario. So, you know, as you can see, you know, it depends on which slider you're working on and which direction you're pushing in terms of does it make a difference. In this case, I think there's more separation when we went to the negative for these extreme highlights than what I'm seeing here in the shadows. But another image may show the differences in a slightly different way. Then for one last example, let's take a look at saturation on a different image. So here's my base image. And I've made a couple of different comparisons. The first one, I boosted saturation to the max just to see how things look in a more obvious way. So here we're taking the raw adjustment and pushing saturation to the max. Obviously it's way too much, but it'll help demonstrate the issues. And then we'll look at a more realistic one in a moment with the other version. Just to show you what I did, if I double click in here, what I mean is I push saturation to the max as in plus 100. So that's what I've done globally on the raw. If we do it as a filter globally, we get a different result. It's deepened down a lot of these values. Overall, maybe not that different if we did it in a more subtle way, but it's certainly different. Some details like around this door you'll notice are just not quite the same. There's some color shifts. You know, it is a different result, but not terribly different. Now, what if we do it raw with a local adjustment? Well, that is just completely different. I mean, look at these minarets here. I mean, like from before to after, how much that breads up. Here's just the raw. So here's the raw global versus raw local. It's obviously pushing things in a very, very different way. And look at things like this glass right here. You know, here from before to after, it's not changing things too much if they're low in saturation. What it's really doing is taking things which are high in saturation and boosting them. That's what we normally expect of saturation. But in the local version, it's not just boosting the high saturation, it's also boosting the low saturation. And normally we think of that as being more of a vibrance adjustment. Now again, I don't know exactly why this is, but if we take a look at this, you know, globally we have vibrance and saturation. But if we look at the local adjustment, right, we don't have vibrance, we only have saturation. So it may simply be a design choice to boost all colors without discriminating between high or low saturation in the local context because there is no vibrance. I'm not sure. Regardless, that's generally what you're going to see is that the local adjustment is going to take things and just oversaturate them considerably in these lower areas. And I think that's a real watch out with this tool. And then let's take a last look here at this filter applied locally and we'll just compare it to the filter globally. And obviously there's a big difference. And the overall theme here is clearly that the local version of saturation can produce some pretty nasty effects in certain areas here. And I would just like the black slider, be very careful when you're using the saturation for the local adjustments in raw. So obviously this is kind of over the top. What happens if we do it in a more subtle way? Let's go and hide this. And in this version here, what I did was I made a reasonable adjustment to boost the yellows. I mean, that to me looks like about the right amount to bring out some more of that color. And this was done with the raw global. If we double click into it, you can see that I boosted by 15 points on the saturation. And then in the next one, I've done it as a global filter. Overall, whether it's raw or not, there's not a huge difference here when you're making a reasonable adjustment. I think Clearly the raw was better when you push it pretty far, but within more of the range of reason, there's not a huge difference in this particular case. So I'm not as worried about whether I have raw data or not in this particular scenario. Then let's take a look at using the raw through a local adjustment.
And again, I tried to match the yellows. That was my main thing I was trying to adjust. Notice the blue shifted quite a bit. But also if I go into my actual adjustment, and so again, we're not doing it globally, we're doing it locally. And in this local adjustment, I had to move the saturation by quite a bit more to get the same result in these areas because this tool is not as targeted to the already saturated values. It works differently. So I had to boost this by 50 instead of 15 on the global. So it's a different slider value where I was trying to just match the overall result in these yellow areas. And you can see, I think that it does a reasonable job there, but it has some significant effects to the sky, obviously. And look at this. Again, we got the same problem with this window getting blown out. And I think that's a real concern for me. I don't like this result at all. So even though I got to a pretty good yellow here, you know, it's causing problems in this window. I think some of the lights here look less natural after that adjustment. It's creating a lot of blue colors that don't really exist there. And I just think it's overall pushing what amounts to vibrance to extreme levels when you work with it locally. And if we look at the filter version locally, that's going to have a different result yet. And in this case, maybe it actually helps it by not boosting some of those values quite as much. But the bottom line is that once again, generally speaking, you want raw and global adjustments and be careful with some of these local adjustments. Ultimately, to get the most out of these tools, I really would steer in the direction of trying to make a global adjustment on raw and apply it with a luminosity mask. Now to learn more about Camera Raw Smart Objects, click to this next video.